everyone, Rini here and today I'm going to show you how I put together these vintage journals um, using the digital vintage journal kit that we have in the shop. I know Kerry did a video on these a little while ago and I'll pop the link to her video in the description box in case you'd like to take a look at hers as well. Um, but I'm going to show you my way of putting these together and also how I use some of the other bits and pieces that come with the kit. So this is uh, just one of the plain journals that I've put together using the kit hasn't been embellished yet and this is one that I've started embellishing not all of the pieces I've used in this apart from uh, from this kit like this uh, little charm is from a charms digital um, so envelopes and uh, little journaling cards just you know started working on this so got Larry here right now. I don't know if you can see him on camera, but he's right here. Can you come say hello, Larry? Yes. All right, hop down. Hop down. Thank you. The kit has uh, several cover options to choose from. I've printed the covers on 250 GSM card. And then it has envelopes in the matching papers and, and uh, pockets. And I've printed these on just re regular 80 GSM copy paper. Oops, see those is. And tags, which I've also printed on 250 GSM. And a couple of these lined note card slips. And then it also has these pages as well. All right. So to begin with, we will need a cover. So I think maybe we'll just start with this plainer one. Let's start by cutting out the cover. All right, so the next step I'm going to do is just fold it in half like this. And now I'm going to glue these together. I need a bit of scrap paper to glue on and glue stick will work for this. Bit of glue on the inside I'm just going to glue on one side on the inside should I glue glue make sure it's all covered and then fold I'm just going to use this tool to push out any excess glue I'm going to put that aside to let it dry for a few minutes while we deal with the pages. So uh, these pages are just printed on single side and I can uh, fold them over and glue them together, which I did with these ones I already uh, prepared earlier. So it makes the pages a bit thicker, but I, I don't mind that. Um, but you'll put probably put less pages in because it's a bit thicker. Um, but if you didn't want to do that, print the paper, um, put it back through the printer and print it again on the other side, which I've got here, which I've already done. It doesn't, um, always line up exactly, but it should still work for this project. So let's use these and, uh, I'm going to cut them out. Uh, 
and each piece of taper should give me uh, enough each piece of paper should give me enough to make for two pages in the book well two pieces for the signature seems I'm suffering with a unable to English today uh, as Kerry would tell me so same as every other day then so yes it is the same as just about every other day Isn't funny how some days just formulating simple sentences seems like a struggle I blame that there's not enough coffee in my system all right so uh, now I have done the cutting I'm going to fold that in half and then use my ruler to cut down that line I have made you don't need to fold it in half I just find that a simple way to find the middle trim and there's I'll fold each one of these in half again oops that wasn't very good but oh well so there's two so I'll do a couple more and I won't bore you with watching this part because it's just cutting that's not the right paper and I'll be back in a minute when I've done a few more of these okay so I've done six uh, and I think I'll leave it at that for now because I want to put a few other bits and pieces in and I don't want it to get too fat but you can put in as little or as many as you like it's really a personal preference so I'm just going to slot all these into each other like that and I also want to put in a page of uh, these these journaling line journaling cards so to do that this one was just printed on the copy paper and I'm basically going to do the same thing I've just done for the pages I'm going to cut oops, badly apparently the cards out feel like I've had a couple of days of just I don't know how, what you'd describe it as but you know not operating at full capacity brain power stuff going on walking into things and you know can't formulate sentences doing silly things it's just one of those weeks I guess all right so I'm going to trim this one off here so I've got these four still all connected together and I'm going to fold them in half just as good as you can we'll trim it once it's glued bit of scrap paper again all right glue I've been remembering lately uh, I think it's because of my uh, <laughs> silly things that I've been doing lately I've been remembering lots of silly things that I've been doing uh, you know how you know one thing triggers the memory farm of all the the file of stupid things you've done that you store in your brain well I've tripped that lately and I've just been thinking about some of the th silly things you do like um, this one time when I was uh, 15, 14, no, I was probably 14 or 13. I was quite young, but old enough. <laughs> and uh, I was helping mum fix the kitchen sink. Uh, I can't remember if it was blocked or if she dropped something down it, but we'd taken the U-bend off the sink and it was full of water. And I was carefully bringing it down 
<laughs> without thinking. I just brought it up and tipped it in the th sink, thinking, oh, I'll just tip the water out in the sink that I just removed the U-Bend from. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So if you guys have any stories of you doing things where your brain's kind of tuned out for a moment that you remember in, and it's hilarious, please let me know in the comments. I, um, I'll probably tell you a few more <laughs> as we go on. All right, so um, I want to give that a minute to dry before I start cutting it because I'm always tearing paper. So let's go back to the cover now. This should have dried enough for the next part. So... I'm just thinking, um, if I'm going to make it a bit thicker, I mean, here's what my brain's thinking. I could score it straight down the middle and fold it, and then I would have, you know, this simple fold down the centre and however many pages you've got in there. But uh, like I said, when you start embellishing it and it gets thicker, that's not accommodating for any thickness. So I'm thinking if I score it on each side of the centre, give it a slightly wider spine it might allow for a bit more room eh, bit of an experiment I don't know let's try it let's try it and see what happens so what I might do is use my mat here to find where I want to score things all right so there's the center so if I score it on these lines here where is the scoring tool? I might use this just to help that. I'll turn it around. I find it easier to do everything on this side. Refind my middle. Okay, so now. Probably move it up a bit. This mat's so old and faded, I really need to get a new one. But I've only found pink ones, and I don't like the pink ones. Not that I was a massive fan of the green ones, but I like the green ones better than I like the pink ones. All right, let's try there. Give it a little press. Okay. Alright, so what I might do now is just go back with the ruler and these score lines and just push it in the other direction, the way I actually want it to fold. Like that. And... Hard to see. a bit of a fold. What I might do is put one of the other books inside it so it's fatter that way and then that. All right that may or may not work and once we put all the pages in we can give it a more firmer press but let's start with that okay so let's go back to this now it's still a bit damp I can feel that it's got that not quite ready glue feeling but I'm going to just fold it anyway maybe I'll use scissors to trim it instead of my knife and then I won't risk tearing the paper like I always do Just trimming the little white overhanging. If it's not too bad, you can just hide it with a bit of inking. Alright, might just do a bit of inking as well anyway. I think we'll do this brown. Oh, 
Better do the other side too, huh? Duh. Fold the other way. Do the other side. All right, so I'll just put that in as one of these interesting pages, just like that. All right, before we get too much further, we need to make sure we don't need to trim these pages at all. So height-wise, they are spot on, and width-wise, they're good as well. So I guess now the next time, it, uh, the next time, English. The uh, next step is putting it in your book. So I'm going to stitch it this time. If you wanted to uh, do it another way, all of these little strips that I've been uh, trimming off the pages, you can cut them out and use them to glue uh, your pages into book if you wanted to. So I'm just going to stitch these in right now. So I'm going to make sure... Everything's where I want it to be. Oopsie daisies. Double check. There. There. Tap together. Alright, I'm going to use a couple of clips to put there. And there, just to hold them where I want them. I'm going to, I don't have um, a punch cradle or anything, um, so I'm just going to use this uh, soft mat and a pokey tool. I want to put it in the centre of the uh, two scores we made earlier. Move that like that. Alright, so there is the centre. And of course, I've already balked it. That's not quite central. Whatever. We work with it. And from that hole to the edge. There. And from that hole to the edge. There. All right, it'll do. So, line this up where I want it to be. All right, put them together like that. Let's just go through the holes we did before and hope for the best. It will do. All right, so now I need how to stab myself with the needle. Right, I've now got some uh, cotton. I haven't tied the end off. I have um, doubled it over, so it's two strands the same length, and I've just guessed how long I'm going to need. I'm going to put it through the centre hole. Now when it gets about that much left, I'm just going to put my thumb on it to hold on to it. doesn't matter which hole you go through next. One hole through the center and clip. Right, I'm just going through each hole two or three times. I'm just using regular cotton. When you get to your last pass, go through whichever hole at each end was your last pass and then through underneath the cotton so that you've got both pieces in the middle. Tie one knot that way, and then swap the strands. Tie one knot that way. Oops. And then 
third just for luck and time and trim okay unclip unclip let's see how well we did where's that pressy tool have a look so cover page page all right so far so good Okay, next I want to put an envelope in and I'm going to pick one of these that I like. Do we want to match the paper? Do we want something a little darker? Maybe something with some blue in it? Uh, I think I'll actually go with this one. So I'm going to just cut roughly out like that. Now I want my envelope to not be white on the inside so I can ink um, but I think in this case what I'm going to do is get one of my uh, single sided pieces of paper these ones pick one that's not the same color so I like that just going to trim it out real quick right, like that now I need a piece of scrap paper and glue all over the part of the envelope like that and then I'm going to stick it on the uh, page we've just cut out Using scissors, I'm just going to trim that out. All right. Now I really should let this dry before I score and fold it, but I'm impatient, so let's give it a, tr a try and hope for the best. Maybe instead of scoring it, I'll just press like that. Just carefully. I don't want to accidentally fold it in the wrong place while it's still a bit damp. Tear it. Alright, so I'm going to fold those parts over. Press, press, and press. Now I think I might need to trim just to turn off the top here and here. It doesn't look like I folded it in quite the right place but that will do, that fixes it. Now I've got this tiny thin envelope but before we glue that together we want to sew it into our book. So I need to decide which way I want it to open. Do I want it to look like an envelope 
here. I could have sewn in with the rest of the signature if I wanted to and have it in the middle but I think I might just pop it in there at the end so where's my soft pad and my pokey tool and I'll need a bit more cotton on my needle okay so I'm going to uh, put it through the holes that I already made so find where the center is now I just need to turn it this way so I can see right that's where I want it where is the center hole okay, there So what I might do is make it over here and next hole is there and there. Alright, so I've just poked the little holes in the envelope where the other holes are it's kind of approximate but close enough and I'm going to start by sewing through the envelope and then through the center hole and keep a bit of cotton there so through the center hole and not the center hole through one of the side holes find the hole that matches on the envelope this is hard to do holding it this way sorry and find it go through it yep back through the center hole through the bottom hole well, that didn't sound right did it through the other hole like that right, just going to make sure it's all tight I'm going th to go through it all once more just secure it in and bottom all right so loop it through under the cotton so it's at the center tie it once this way oops once and I've not left myself a lot of cotton there so it's proving to be a bit difficult twice but we'll get it and last time and trim blood scissors all right so now that's there i am going to ah you know what i didn't do before i sewed it in that i probably should have done a little bit of inking let's do it now so this bit's much easier to do before you sew it in the book but I will never mind. All right, so now I want to take some of this glue, put it on these little flaps, 
like so. And then fold over and just ensure I didn't glue the envelope to itself. There we go. So now we have an envelope in the back of the book. So it's getting thicker, more pressing. Oakley doakley. Next. Let's do the little Let's cut this out roughly for a second. So what I'm going to do is again take a piece of, do we have any of that left? Yes, some of this. Alright, so let's figure out how wide this needs to be approximately okay where is a pencil or something Ooh, so just mark that there just going to cut just inside this line I've drawn and hopefully I should have a piece of paper that is roughly the same width. I'll take just a tad more off, I think. It will do. Oakley doakley. A little bit of the scoring tool or the folding maneuver. Sven. These were just printed on the 80 GSM so they're not very thick but it's thick enough for what we want. Alright so fold these over just so they're folding in the right direction like this. Now before I glue anything I'm going to take my scrap paper, my glue stick and all over the back of this little piece we just trimmed I'm going to stick it down so it overhangs over the top and it's along the edge like that. Then I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to fold this other piece over on top of it. Hopefully we've cut it at the right size. I think it's still a tad too wide. I need to trim that off just a tad. Yep, better. I'm going to re-glue just a tad of glue down the inner edge there too. Like that. Probably need a bit more glue on that. Actually, let's just peel it open. Glue on there. And fold. Alright. Glue on the bottom tab. And fold. And trim. Like that. It's so light, it almost looks like it's the same just white paper it was before. So, <laughs> Look how you can turn this white paper into this other white paper. It's amazing. I'm going to stick my one inch punch in and I'm just going to take a notch out. Alright, a bit of inking. Now, where did I put the tags? Okay, 
So let's pick a Turk. Let's go for this bluey green one here. These ones were printed on the 250 GSM, so it's like a card. Alright, and what I might do for the back is take one of the where are you little lined papers. Oh, I pulled them out earlier to cut one off. There it is. Alright, that ink glue on the back of the tag. Like so. And then I'm going to stick it down on the lined paper. So the tag was 250 GSM and the lined paper was just regular 80 GSM copy paper. Make sure it fits in my pocket. Yes, it does. Though by the feel of things, I might have accidentally glued my pocket to itself at the bottom. And it looks like I was able to save it. And with the tag. Yep, it works. Alright, so then we can find a page where we want to put this in. So. Let's just pick I like that colour there. So a bit of glue on the back of the pocket, although you don't need to glue it in, you can paper clip it in or stitch it in. Or you could do what I've just done and wreck it. I think I can salvage it. Let's put it in. Salvaged. Beauty, I guess, of making junk journaly type elements or vintage type elements is when you scratch it or tear a little bit off, it kind of just adds to the aged look. So <laughs> that's all right then. And now we have a pocket in the book. Thanks for joining me today as I made this slim journal and I hope you have fun making yours. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye!